Hello and welcome. I'm the Restless Kaiser. And I'm Alan. But together we are Modeling, Modeling for Advantage. Advantage. Alan, right. first time making a video on the show. That was very good. It is. Very good. good. It was slick. Good. 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 Right. So we've got here the first of the new epic Hail Caesar. Right. The War with Hannibal. From Warlord Games. From Warlord Games, indeed. And this one we've got here is Hannibal Barker's Carthaginian Army. So if we open this up and we'll show the beautiful people at home uh, what they're doing. Now, you remembered some years in the hobby, Alan. Uh, a few, a few. I mean, I, I met I'm you in the mid '90s. I've sort of, yes. I do admit I have dropped out of ancients lately, but um, but you you do go back to War Games Research Group. Uh, War Games Research War Games Research Group. War Game Research Group pre DBM. I started playing Sixth Edition. If that yeah. means anything to anyone out there, you and I used to actually play a bit of Twenty Eight Mil we used to. Han Hannibal and Republican Romans. I, I think we did. Yes. Yeah. Yes. In, sixth. Sixth. in Sixth. Yes. In Sixth. And at some point, you had some Fifteen Mil Numidians. I remember. I've still got them. Yes. You've still got them. And I've got there we go. I've got um, some 50 millimeter Seleucids as well. So. There we go. So there's a lot, the content here is massive, so I'm not going to read it all out. What we are going to do is going to pull the sprues out for your viewing pleasure and use it as a vehicle to waffle a little bit about Carthage, the Second Punic War, yes. etc. Uh, so we get Carthaginian painting and assembly instructions, and that's quite useful. I guess. You have yeah. the pictures of the, well, they're quite small, but you get the front and back of the... The, the front and back, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then some stuff on there. You get a bubble wrapped Hail Caesar rule book. We're just going to get these things out. We will look at each of these things in a bit more detail. We get some water slide decals. We get this type of sprue. We get... What's the, what does that say, Alan? What's what that? does this say? It says... Hephalarchus, Carthaginian general. So we get a big blister pack for just one figure. This is. All right, we'll uh, dice. We'll sort these out to the appropriate piles and we'll be right back. All right, reading glasses on. Hail Caesar Punic Wars rule book. I don't know for sure, but I believe that this is fundamentally the same rule book, but it's got updated scenarios. So yeah, the back, we've got the Battle of Zama. Yeah, uh, Elorca, Republican Rome, Carthage. Yes, so it's it is the same rule set, but the photographs and the scenarios have been updated. It's A5. It's quite weighty. Really pleased that they put it in a in a baggie, right. a bubble wrap. Because actually, with the Warlord ones, with the paperbacks, they're often damaged when you get them, especially around the edges here. They get dinged up. They give you six dice. Oh, they're not exact. I'm not, they're, I'm not proper size dice. Anyway. No, these are like twelve mil dice. These are these are baby cracker dice. But you know what? They put some in, I guess, and they didn't spend any of your money and, on it. And it's use. And they can be useful. They can, they can, they can be as, useful as, as markers. wound markers. Yeah. Um, water slide decals. So this is Carthaginian only, or at least Carthage's army. And so we have got these. Two symbols, the dot and the half crescent moon. I think that is Baal Hamun, I have which is the kind of father god of the Carthaginians. And then this one here, which looks a bit more of a lady. I think this is Tanit, which is the lady, but it may be Melkart, which is one of their other gods. The thing about Carthaginian culture is the Romans did such a good job of destroying Punic culture completely and its civilization that we don't have really any records left. Right, right. There are no records of Punic writing. Right. We don't know what it looked like, right. let alone what it said. Um, so all of this stuff could be nonsense. We know it from Roman sources right. uh, about that. But they are definitely Carthaginian decals. Um, yeah, which is good. We've got four sprue types. Shall we start with the elephant in the room? We can start with the pachyderms. So we get two elephant sprues, each of which contain two elephants. Right. And is it two elephants to a base? Where was that? Oh. 
slip of paper or something because there's only one base. Two here. elephants for the base, yes. Two elephants to the base. So obviously th in, this is in 15 mil, but it's a big model, so it is multi-part. The elephant itself, front and back, two halves stick together. There's a head. Um, the elephant's bodies and head are keyed and pinned. Yes. And oh, so you put the ears on, you mount the ears on the body. Uh, you see yes. you this the piece here. You, so the, yeah, so there's a gap at the neck, you mount the ears on and then you stick the head on that. Okay. And it's keyed in that way. Um, and then you also get six elephant crew. Six elephant crew for your howdah. Which your is, howdah, oh, which and is in fact, incorporated in seven one. Yes, so it's got a howdah, which is the kind of fighting turret yeah. platform that they built on there. That's a decent number of crew, actually. One, two, three, four, five, one, six, one, seven. One will be a how two mahout, mahout, two mahout drivers and, and two, two fighting crew. Yeah. yeah, and two fighting crew. One of which has a pike, and the other has uh, one with a javelin. javelin. There's two okay. with a pike. Look, there's two with a pike. Well, there's two. One, one, one for each. Yeah. Yeah, so you get a pike, a bowman, and then one of them seems to get an extra javelin arm yes. guy. Yes. Yeah. All right. They're really nice models. There's even texture on the elephant skin as well. Right. If yeah. you just run your yes. finger on that. Yes. That's very nice. So, um, and then when you put the, the bits together, you're going to have to add the sides to the howdar as well. Yeah. On that. So, 15 mil elephant, they look pretty nice. Well, they, they are pretty nice, yes. Yes. They are pretty they nice. They are pretty nice, yes. Yeah. So, uh, looking at the helmets in the style, I don't know. You might be able to get away with using these as Greeks as well. You may, you may. I mean, it's going to take uh, some because some knowledge to uh, appreciate that. But uh, yes, they may be passable as Greeks. They may be passable as, not as, sure exactly as Greeks. Exactly. What elephants so like. uh, elephants in uh, in the uh, set then? Uh, yes, the other thing. Sorry, mm. slightly anarchy. Yeah, the elephants have big ears, so they're African elephants rather than small eared Indian elephants. So in Carthage, there when the Romans conquer it, yeah, there's about two hundred elephants in training in right. this massive compound. Right. So th they at, at some point they start doing this on a very big scale. Right. Um, which is interesting because one of the points, and we'll come to that when we talk about the infantry, is the Carthaginians are very much a mercenary army. Right. Yeah. But they train their own elephants. Yes. They don't have them. No one else um, would. So elephants in ancient warfare. Yes. Do you, do you know where this where this comes from? Well, um, certainly the Indians started it off, mm -hmm. as far as I know. Yeah. Um, that um, Alexander the Great bumped into mm. the um, Indian armies uh, when he advanced as far as the Indus Valley. But um, that's as far as I know as it, as it started. And yeah, I'm, the I'm, idea would have spread absolutely. in the West. And that seems um, to be what, what happened, because those places, what was the Persian Empire, is replaced by these, what we call successor kingdoms. Yeah. Essentially, Alexander divides up much of the territory he's conquered. Well, he doesn't. He doesn't they they do. He dies. When he dies, they decide who's yeah. having them what bit. Yes. Yeah. And you get these new kingdoms like um, Bactria and Seleucia and so forth. Ptolemy Egypt. Ptolemy. And Ptolemaic Egypt. Yes. Yeah, which is why Ptolemaic Egypt is a Greek yes. um, dynasty rather than an Egyptian one. But yeah, they start uh, developing elephants and it comes in through Egypt and then in through Greece and the Carthaginians I think it's during the tail end of the first Punic War they start hiring Greek mercenaries right. yeah. and among them they bring in elephant trainers yes. and they bring in new captains it's it's the the golden age of Greece is, is long in the past. That's sort of 500 BC. Pretty much the things that you've heard about ancient Greece is sort of 500 BC. Yeah. But still the Greek kingdoms and states, they still kind of have a bit of an adventurous culture and they get involved in other people's wars all yeah. the time. Yeah. Um, famously, King Ferris um, yes. fighting in, in um, uh, Syracuse and so forth. 
as he tries to make his own claims there. So you have these Greek captains, war captains, and because the Carthaginians are so into their mercenaries, they take that. So that they bring it in. I think he's a Xerxes. He's certainly or Xerxes. He begins with an X. That was a book I read a long, 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 long time ago when I was a young man. But they bring in war elephants, and obviously they are a game changer. They are a technology. And with Carthage, the early. If you were to get like an old WRG Carthaginian army list, nice. it'd have potentially things like heavy chariots in it. It did, yes. Because the wars with what, Carthage as a culture is older than Rome, and Rome is something like 700 BC. Yeah. You know, yes. so that often the Carthaginians you see one army list to cover a period of nearly a thousand years, yes. um, and very much the role of chariots has been complete. The heavier yes. chariots have been yep. completely replaced by elephants, yes. which are mm -hmm. much more effective. But yeah, so these are nice models. It definitely, it was a big part of the Carthaginian war machine was to use elephants. Mm -hmm. The Romans would adopt it later. Uh, to a limited extent, yeah. But yeah, no, uh, to, never, to, never yeah, not nothing like to the same extent. Yeah. yeah, but I th I think that's about scale. Yeah, w wars got Rome's got thirty odd legions scattered across the world. Yes, whereas um, Carthage has got one army in the field. One army in the field, and um, the Romans have limited access to elephants. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So that's that one. Uh, the next brew we've got here is the Celts. They're not Celts. They're not like Celtic Celts warriors. Yes. Uh, They've got some sort of sort of recognise them by the shape of the shields. So uh, yeah, so you've got six strips. Six strips of these. So if you've not seen uh, Hills, um, the epic range before, you tend to mount your infantry on these bases. They're mounted two ranks deep on these bases. And the thing I remember Starlight talking about when they first started with the American Civil War is he said with individual miniatures, you just never get that shoulder to shoulder look. Right. Right. And so he wanted to make a range of miniatures for mass battles, which look like a like a close order mob. But yeah, these um, uh, goals, they look great. You've got a mixture of shields. You've got each guy's in a different pose. Now, are all six of these strips slightly different? I think they are. They're certainly the cloaks at the back are different. Yes. Because, um, let's have a look. Yes. There's, yeah. well, the, there, there are three strips. There are th three strips, and there's two of each. Um, is that how it is? I think because if you ever look, these two are the same. Those two are the same, and those two are the same. Yeah, have a look, have a look at the guy on the far left yeah. hand side. Yeah, that no, one's you're got right. a long mm. cloak. That one's got no cloak, and that one's yep. got a shorter cloak. So as you as you're putting these, you probably don't want to put the one side by side, back to back. Um, but yeah, and there's, there's even the odd uh, naked guy in here I saw looking at them from Ooh. the back. There was a few shirtless, and by naked I mean shirtless. 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 There's a few shirtless guys. Yeah, but which is a lot less obvious when their body is mostly covered by the shield from yes. the front. You'll see that. But now also on here, then, we've got a couple of cavalry figures, which mm. definitely look like Gauls. Yes. And then we've got some slingers. And I'm not sure whether these are two different types of slingers, because right. I'm just looking at the haircuts. So I am going to go back to the big list of what comes and, yep. and whether there's... Th these might be Balearic slingers and these Gallic slingers. That's possible. Also, the two cavalrymen, one's a standard bearer and one is maybe an, an officer. Maybe an officer, yeah. general, yes. yes. He's certainly a very heavy cavalry type. Yeah, yeah that makes the most sense. Um, but yeah, you see what I mean about these look more Gallic yes. yeah. and these. Now the other, the, the thing about the Balearic slingers though, is they carry javelins as well. Oh, I was javelins that, and bucklers. That's what um, because okay. they were. Um, we did, did, did a video about this on the Vitrix Balearic slinger models. Right. They're some of the world's earliest kind of soldier cultures. Right. Um, living on Ibiza. Yes. As a sheep farmer is a grim existence. It's a pile of volcanic rock. Right, yes. Um, and they apparently they just got quite good with sling stones for keeping, you know, stuff away from the flock or whatever. And 
other uh, Greek and then Carthaginian and other people started recruiting them as mercenaries because it was a much better life for them. Um, and a few of these guys would go back and it just became a bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger right. thing. Yeah. And like, you know, again, if you played any kind of ancient wargaming, Balearic Slingers are, right. are one of those, those units that everybody can have as a mercenary. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, but miniatures I, I think are really good. And I think they got a real warband feel. Yes. The other thing you get from this, um, if you didn't know, if you look at some of these and think, why is that guy wearing a Roman helmet? It's not that this Gaul is wearing a Roman helmet. It's that the Roman helmet is a Gallic helmet. Right. Yes. The Romans nicked their equipment from everyone. I don't mean like physically nicked the items. They nicked the technology. Right. The swords come from Spain. Right. The uh, the armor comes from the Gauls. Right. All right. Yep. So that's again, that's an interesting sprue. We'll, ha we'll have a look on there. So then uh, are these two are different. They're different. Yeah, they are different. This is allied troops and that is Carthaginians. Right. So I'll pass this one to so you. I'll look pass at one to me. Right. Allied troops. So this is your mercenaries. All right. So we've got... We've got all sorts on here. Lots of spearmen. There are three stands of spearmen with smaller shields. And Th these look like your standard up. Greek mercenary they, hoplites. With, with, with their hoplons. Big, their big yeah, they've got their big hoplons and their shields. And, their shields. Yeah. and then these guys with different shields, they presumably are a particular faction. Because mm -hmm. um, if I look on the back here... Uh, maybe they're Celtiberian warrior. So that's Celtiberian. Celt yes, could be Iberians. These are these are Iberian Celts, I reckon. Right. These ones right. as warriors, um, and those potentially. And these would be it's Allied Italian infantry then, yes. or the other way around. Not sure. I didn't have to look that up, but. Uh, and then cavalry wise, so this is our Spanish and our Gallic cavalry. Uh, I will, I can't, I'm not too familiar with what Gallic cavalry looks like, so. Um, so cavalry, we get Spanish get, light cavalry some and Gallic them, medium cavalry. So some of them have got round shields, just to be. Janet and John, some of them have got round shields and some of them have got... Yeah, uh, so these round shielded one, that's that's going to be your Spanish cavalry. Yeah. And these with these Gallic shields, yes, Gallic, Gallic looking yeah. shields, it's going to be the Gallic cavalry. Yeah. And they're a bit they're a bit heavier looking as well. They're coming out as medium cavalry. And we've got some more skirmishes on here. Really nice mix. So um, this sprue then is, it's called Allied Troops. The war with Hannibal. People tend to know that Hannibal crossed the Alps with some elephants yes. um, and he didn't actually have many of them left. He then goes on to have a couple of <coughs> massive victories at Trebia and at Cannae quite soon afterwards, uh, demonstrating the disastrous nature of Roman command and the dual consulships and so forth, which we'll talk about a bit more when we look at the Romans. But I think what a lot of people don't necessarily know is that he campaigns for 10 years in Italy. Yes. Yeah. And all of... and. We, again, our experience or understanding of the Roman Empire is clouded by the fact that the Roman Empire lasts well into the four five hundreds as an empire. In this era, which is 200-ish BC, 210, yes. most of Italy is quite recently conquered by Rome. In fact, the northern part, where modern-day Milan, Venice, the Po Valley, up there, is still Gallic. It will be until, it won't be until Julius Caesar that that comes under right. yeah. uh, Roman control. Yes. But these other Italian cities are still basically clients of Rome. Yes. They're not Romans. They're, they're literally, it's a three-tier system. They're Romans, there are Latins, and there are Italians, right. which have different rights. And they owe Rome tribute. So when Hannibal starts turning up and killing lots of Romans, many of these cities rebel against Rome. And that's why you're going to see some very Roman-like units um, in this army. And very, very few. You'll note that nothing that we've seen so far, apart from the elephants, was actually Carthaginian. Right. Yes. Um, these are 
these are Gauls and Celts. These are uh, uh, Spanish and others. Some more Celts. And this final one then is the Carthaginian. Is that what it says? Carthaginians. And does it have any Carthaginians on it? It does have some. There are more with Celtic type shields, but there are these spearmen with round shields, and a u they have a, a uniformed uniform. All the, all the figures yes. are almost the same. Or so the same. these, I assume, are the Libo Phoenician. These are actual North African these, troops. The, the, the hoplite type. The hoplites. Because the helmet's a bit different. I've definitely seen this in other figure ranges yeah. and illustrations. So this is your kind of core African spear unit, yes. which was uh, uh, um, the veteran component of his army that had campaigned with him in Spain and that made that critical flanking turn right. at Cannae. Um, so we've also got some cavalry on here. And actually, you mentioned the box doesn't mention Numidian cavalry. Right. But yeah, that's what these guys with javelins look like to me. They can be, yes, they've, they can be Numidian cavalry with the round shields and the, yes. Um, yeah, because Numidians were other people from North Africa. They're sort of the more barbaric types in, in so the, um, and they were hired. I'm not sure if it's they a were client kingdom of, a client of, kingdom of Carthage. Whether they're strictly mercenaries or a client kingdom, but they're mm. they're uh, tied. But again, when Scipio Africanus lands in North Africa, one of the things that he does is make a deal with I think he's called Masinissa, the Numidian king, right. and they switch switch sides. Right. Um, so yeah, on here we've got so these other ones with these. Gallic type shields. Yep. I suspect that they are what we call, uh, as a wargaming unit, these are Hannibal's veterans. Right. So these are people um, that are, that are sp some sp Spanish, some Gaul, some African, and they've got lots of captured equipment and lots of experience. Good so they're basically equipped with a mixture of Roman and other equipment right. that they've captured quite heavily armored, quite seasoned. I'm not sure on here which they would necessarily be because it's not actually buttonholing you into into this there wasn't a sheet saying this is what this figure is this is what that figure is so i guess it's kind of up to you although there is a big long list of what they are so for example Ligu ligurian light infantry i'm not sure which ones they would you, be i mean there are certain numbers of certain figures mm. so if you were <laughs> uh, you could if, possibly if you buy the pack you will probably go through and work out how many of yes. each individual type there is and work out which types are. Because some of them, I think there are certain number of stands and some, some of them are 12, 12 bases and others are eight yeah. bases. So yeah. you could work that out from a process of deduction. Uh, yeah, because this says eight, just says eight bases of Libby Phoenician medium cavalry, which is, right. this uh, is the heavier types on here. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so One, two. You know, with the, with the bigger round shields. With the bigger round shields and the helmets. And the helmets, yeah. Yeah, the medium cavalry types. Uh, so, yeah, you definitely got this. That definitely looks like Numidian cavalry to me. These guys. Yeah, certainly it can be. Clearly it's, oh, it's almost how they paint them because the, Numidian, yes. the Midi Numidians wore um, effectively un Red. unbleached cotton. That's no, that's Balearix. Are you sure? Anyway. I think they were red. They were red. Right. Well, I think they were, they were white, but uh, <laughs> um, there's a whole army painted wrong if they were red. <laughs> so the... I painted some about four years ago. I'm sure I looked it up and there was some debate over this on that very topic. Yeah. Uh, so if you know the answer as to whether they were red or whether they were undyed, then, uh, yeah. th then say in the l in the details below. Yeah. So there's two sprues of elephants. There's four sprues of these uh, Gallic warriors, which has got some command figures on and the standard bearer. Only th is that three of this one, or have we got one of those mixed oh, in over there? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, another. Yeah, 
That's no, that's not that one. Right. What's that one? Yes. There's four of these allies and five, six, seven, eight of these Carthaginian. One last thing. Yep. The miniature. A miniature. The, the single, single figure. So in oh, what's the blister? each of the sets there is a there is a single Sayo cast figure. This is the one-eyed man himself, Hannibal Barker. So with that combination of troops there, I think it does a really good job of depicting the Carthaginian army of the Second Punic War. In that it is very, most of it isn't Carthaginian. Yes. Um, so with the Carthaginians, um, even before the First Punic War, which was their first major conflict with Rome, uh, some a, a generation earlier, they largely moved to fighting with mercenaries. They realised that war was expensive, but what it also did was killed off your citizens. And they were very much a mercantile city-state, so they decided it was far more productive for their merchant class, which is their senior, senior people within their society, to be out making money to pay somebody else to fight for them. Yes. I mean, obviously, I don't know how many people actually lived in Carthage and whether they didn't have the man pool, manpower pool to actually deploy that many of their own soldiers. But um, I, don't, I don't think that that's... Uh, because their earlier wars in Syracuse and in right. Sardinia are largely made up of Carthaginians. Right. Right. But they also... Carthage seems to be... The, there are standout figures like Hannibal and like his father Hamilcar who are genuinely good commanders. But they seem to be plagued by terrible commanders. They seem to repeatedly... They, Carthage is the principal power in the Western Mediterranean uh, before it's replaced by Rome at the end of the Second Punic War, the end of the First Punic War largely. But for about 150 years, they can't beat the Kingdom of Syracuse. Right. Right. They managed to get half the island off the river. Because yes. they have disaster after disaster. Right. Now, you know, it's like they win some battles, they lose some, and they end up falling out of a campaign. And I think that that's one of the problems with Carthage is it's always driven by the kind of finance right. and the financial aspects of it. It's like, how much is it costing us to prosecute this war versus what is worth winning it? Yes. And they just seem to be quite keen to give up on a war that isn't going well right. and cut their losses, which against the Romans is a terrible, terrible idea right. because the Romans are fighting total war. Yes. They're, they're fighting till annihilation. Yes. Um, and other people don't do that. So you're never going to beat Rome that way. Yes. Um, we talked before the show about the elephants. You felt there should be more elephants. No, I didn't. I felt there was a reasonable number. You'd expect ancient warfare, suddenly mm. there are elephants, and that's the the go-to thing. They are the king tigers the, 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 right. the, the, yeah. elef the yeah. ancient world, and you'd expect they uh, have as many elephants as you can do in any possible army. Right. Uh, right, right, right. If the list says up to four elephants, you're taking four. You, you take four elephants. Right. Here, yeah. there are two stands of elephants right. in, as you can see, we're going to show this. Yeah, yeah, they'll, 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 have, they'll have seen this picture. You see that picture? The elephants are barely noticeable. So yeah. I felt that was a reasonable number. Yeah, yeah. I th so I knew that there were four elephants. What I hadn't realised was that was only two stands. Right, yeah. I think I think you're right. I think I think more elephants because I think your elephants want to be your front rank. Yes. In the, in in that and and in order to achieve that here you're going to have to fight pretty shallow. Yes. And elephants in war certainly in the ancient world in in the western ancient world the Mediterranean world they don't last that long. They don't. No. no. They they come in with Alexander's successor states. Yes. And by, I think Caligula brings a couple to, to England, oh, but only a few. I, oh, obviously, that's, he brings just, a few. that's probably just for shock and awe. Yes. Right, yeah, 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 right. absolutely. Because um, I think one of the things that, that happens with elephants is people, they're very expensive to train, they're very difficult, but they're also very volatile. 
as units. Yes. Um, you know, there's, there's several stories of elephants running amok. One of the great advantages, according to, I think it's in Livy, is that the horses don't like them. That is... Except now uh, that's the other things that rules have applied that yeah. horses don't like them, so they yeah. Uh... But once horses have been around elephants for a period, that stops being an advantage. And what elephants don't like is people throwing spears and, and arrows at them, and they often will turn around and just stampede through your own guys yes. when that happens. Um, and so various techniques were were developed because actually one of the things about a, a stand of elephants, a unit, is it should be surrounded by light infantry. Yes. Because to stop other light infantry coming up and just hamstringing the elephants and yes. so forth, it's pretty horrific uh, way of fighting fighting a battle. Uh, but it, but that was one of the principal ways of dealing with elephants: yes. you either shoot them um, and get them very upset, so they run away, or you get in close. So the elephants ended up needing a lot of troops to protect them. Troops to protect them. Horses. So then, what are they for? Yeah. I mean, the other thing maybe is actually the supply of elephants, because clearly some of them came from India, but then. At certain times, yeah, it's a long way from India for to, to yes. bring the elephants, and then the African elephants. Um, clearly, you have to drag them across or carry them all the way across the Sahara if you want a new elephant. And so, yes, I don't know. I think there was a species of North African elephant I, which I, is gone. I understand there was a species of North African elephant, but that again could have been wiped out in the ancient era. And so, if you wanted a, yeah. an elephant. Um, I'm trying to remember there's African forest elements, elephants and savanna elephants, which I have heard are different species. Right. And so the savanna elephants yeah. may be the ones that are I mean, forest, I, the smaller forest elements. I can't believe that the elephants in the Carthaginian army came from sub-Saharan Africa. Right. I obviously Because that, that feels like a long way. That is a long to way. To take an elephant. A long way to take an elephant. And there's the organisation... Yeah, and the, and the logistics of it. Logistics of it to get yeah. somebody to let you take an elephant across their country, yes. <laughs> yeah, or someone to buy it off, yes. which you could do in the East. You yes. could buy it from these. Yes. And there was a healthy trade um, yes. in supplying people like Ferris with elephants, yes. which w they were from India. Yes. But that's probably why those armies have maybe 30, 40 elephants. Whereas, as I said to you, the, the documentation is that they Carthaginians were training a couple of hundred and they had stabling for more. Mm, yeah. So they were obviously trying to do it on a, on a bigger scale. But yeah, elephants, not, they seem, they must be terrifying at first. Right. And, and just the like enemy armies just are not going to stand up to them. Yeah. But as soon as they kind of work that out, because the rest of the army... <laughs> Which is always the thing with with this is these are all made up of the people that the Romans beat. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, but even the even the Carthaginian own troops are sort of hoplite like. Yes. Yes. But that the other significant difference about the Carthaginian army, as in total contrast to the Romans, is how cavalry heavy it is. Yes. Yes. In in some cases the forces as much as fifty percent right. of the manpower is in cavalry. And that, again, is <coughs> quite an interesting, different style. You know, the Romans very much about heavy infantry, fight your way, you know, punch a hole in the middle of the, of the enemy's army and keep going. Whereas the Carthaginian army is much more flexible, much more dynamic, much more mobile. And that was one of the things that was so good about the Numidian cavalry is they were, they were bridleless and they were, they were nimble. Yes. They were very quick, very, very quick. Not just the horses, just the speed with which they could turn and things like that. They were very good at that kind of scouting and dodging type stuff. So, an interesting army. So you're going to take this army away and paint it, Alan? Uh, no. <laughs> no? <laughs> no. But you love Hannibal. I don't love Hannibal. No, <laughs> what's not to love I'm not Hannibal? really an expert, expert on him. One out, each eye a different colour. I mean, that's, that's a cool, isn't it? You're going to be a modern pop star, what, he tried a different colour? Did he have him? Right. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember if it was from a birth defect or a disease, but he's definitely got two different coloured eyes. Right. I think he loses one at one point. Right. So I, yeah. thought, I thought this would be... I suppose it might be brown and green eyes. Mm. I mean, couldn't, couldn't imagine a North African having blue eyes. Well, he's not a North African. He's, well, a Phoenician. 
The Phoenicians are not North African. The Phoenicians aren't North African. All right. That's another segue <laughs> for you, boys and girls. Well, the, the, obviously they come from the Lebanon. They're Lebanese, yeah. I mean, uh, well, yes, they, well, they're not again, Lebanese. Equ they're... Equally well, they, they come from the, what is now Lebanon, they, they come from Israel, Jordan, now. but yeah. again, that's not really known for its blue eyes, but anyway. So. No, which is interesting how should a little bit of more modern scholarship is, um, I think in the past, these Carthaginian units would have been called African spearmen. Right, yeah. Whereas now we tend to see this term li Libo or Libby Phoenician, because we assume, so, again, very, very early in the ancient period, 7-800 AD, but before the founding of Rome, which is 700-ish AD, Carthage is founded as a settlement from Tyre and Sidon, the Phoenician culture. It's not an empire, it's a collection of city-states, principally Tyre and Sidon. Um, which is in mo roughly modern-day Lebanon. It has been one of the early colonizers of the Mediterranean, um, which will, uh, you know, and they're contemporary with, like, the Mycenaean Greeks as opposed yeah. to the, the kind of the, the Greeks that we recognize today. And they're the ancestors of the Carthaginians, which is why they're called the Punic Wars, because the Romans called the Carthaginians Phoenician or Punic or Poini. These are just different iterations of the same noun, um, different conjugations, which is why they're called the Punic Wars. Right. Because they regarded themselves, they were fighting the Phoenicians. We tend to call them Carthaginians because it is a distinct city-state and it's become significantly more powerful than the than its origins. It had been there for so long, and they definitely had been intermarrying nice. with the with the with the local community, the North African people. So we tend to talk about the Carthaginians as being Lib Libo Phoenician, because right. yeah. they're the Libo, Libo as in Libyan, because it's that that part of the world, yeah. roughly. <laughs> Yeah. Roughly that in Numidia. So yeah, interesting army, an interesting one to play. Um I find it difficult being Hannibal, not because I don't think he's a good guy. I mean obviously right. he's a good guy. It's because the man's a military genius. Right. It's difficult to be a military genius in a war game. Right. Yes. Um because there's normally quite serious restrictions on how you can move your units and yes. what effectiveness things are gonna have. Right. Um and to give your opponent a, a sporting chance. And to give you, yeah, nobody wants to play the Battle of Cannae if it's going to play out as it did. We've been a total Roman massacre. Um, that was our look at the uh, Hail Caesar Hannibal's. Is it called Hannibal's? Hannibal Barker's Carthaginian Army. We will be back at some point and we will have a look at the Romans. Thank you for watching. All right. Bye bye. If you're still here and you're looking for ways to support the channel, there's obviously a lot of ways down in the description, but a key way is to use our affiliate links to Whaling Games and others. You buy your models from them, it doesn't cost you a penny more, and we earn a little bit of commission. Thank you.